Hey everyone, Ken here. Today we're taking a slightly different path. We'll be exploring a captivating selection of historic homes available on Zillow. From charming affordable finds rich in historical value, to breathtakingly grand estates, each home has a story to tell. This series is a fresh take on our shared passion for history, bringing a new perspective to the architectural wonders and historical narratives of these properties. I'm excited to share these discoveries with you and would love to hear your insights and thoughts on these properties as we go through them. Without further ado, let's see some amazing houses. Dalton put together a collection of houses which I have not seen yet, so this will be my first time not only seeing them, but also reacting to them. So Dalton, which house is our first one? Our first house is $160,000 in Cold Brook, New York. All right, let's take a look at this. Oh, it's a Queen Anne with a large front porch and a tower. I'm excited to see what's inside. That is quite the grand stair hall. Wow, look at all of that artisan woodwork. What an incredible entryway this is. In the stair hall, it looks like there's wood balustrade, oversized mill posts. And is that a fireplace I see peeking off to the side here? Let's, um, let's keep going. And, oh, wow, the front door. Do you see the leaded glass windows? That's just something that can't easily be replicated today. Oh, yeah, that's a fireplace off to the side there. How wonderful. I mean, just imagine walking in here during the winter, how warm and cozy this would be. Let's continue through these colonnades to see what's on the other side of the fireplace here. So it looks like a large parlor with a ton of natural light pouring in through all these different windows. I also see a radiator off to the side, and I haven't read the description. I'm not sure if this is radiator heating or not, but it looks like it might be. I love how just refined and elegant this house is with the stained glass window, these really beautiful colonnades throughout. Um, I think this is the third one we're seeing so far. Let's keep exploring, and my goodness, there are so many fireplaces already. So here's the kitchen, and I don't really think this is the allure of the house. We can see the ceilings falling in, it's not exactly historic by any means, but this is something that someone could put a lot of TLC into, or even hire a company to renovate it, depending on what their budget is, and just really make it go with the rest of the house and bring it back to life, because my goodness, this is, um, this is just such an insanely gorgeous, gorgeous house. So it looks like it has some updated bathrooms, which once again, that might be something someone wants to change. But I really hope that whoever ends up buying this just keeps that beautiful millwork and doesn't paint it or replace it with something modern farmhouse or something else that's trendy. So it looks like we're up in one of the bedrooms now, and there's this amazing bay window with leaded glass transoms and a built-in window bench. So it looks like maybe the door goes out onto the veranda. What an amazing room that would be. So now we're up in the tower, we see that there's rounded millwork going along the windows, and then the baseboards also round out. This would have been incredibly expensive and time-consuming to produce back in the day, and this is just once again one of those elements that you don't really see in modern builds. This is really just such a gorgeous house, and I hope that whoever buys it refrains from modernizing it too much, but really gives it the TLC that it deserves. With all that said, Dalton, um, what's the next house you have for us? The next house is in Ohio at $445,900. This is definitely my favorite house on the list. Well, that makes me excited. Let's uh, check it out. Wow, what a stately setting for this all brick Italian eight home. Is that a copper roof I see on top of the tower? Let's keep looking at this. This is just absolutely gorgeous. From the decorative lintels, to the corbels, to the metal roof, the finials, it has all the bells and whistles that you might expect from a grand Victorian era home. So it looks like to enter the house, we're going to pass through a vestibule and open a pair of really ornate doors. What an absolutely grand entrance this is to have the stairs flanked by fluted columns with archways to either side. I am so intrigued to just keep going through this. Wow, this parlor is just jaw-dropping. Look at that coffered ceiling, the marble fireplace, gilded mirror. I am just so excited to keep going through this. So it looks like the dining room is clad in wood panels on the walls with two crystal chandeliers, one hanging at either end of the table. That is just such a refined and stately look. And then off to the other side, it looks like it might have some built-in cabinets. And perhaps one is opening up to reveal a hidden staircase. That's just such a cool feature. This house just keeps going on and on with all these really interesting spaces. I'm not sure where in the house this is. Maybe this is the second floor stair hall. But it looks like there is some sort of a border around the wood floor. And then once again, the ceiling is just, I mean, it's stunning. Every ceiling in this house so far has just been amazing. Oh my gosh, look at the bathroom with the pointed gothic window. 
the dentilated cornice. This is just an incredible, incredible space. There's even a sun porch with, once again, these just amazing windows. This house has so many just incredible features. It's just so interesting to see that even in the private portion of the house, there are these details that just really captivate us, such as the floor. I just really, really hope that whoever buys this house next picks up where the previous owners left off and continues the restoration without sacrificing any of these charming features. This house is a true work of art, and it really deserves to survive through the next generation. All right, that house was absolutely incredible, but I am excited to see where this is going. I think, Dalton, you're doing a great job picking these out so far. So our next house is in New Hartford, Connecticut at $595,000. You know what? I've actually seen this house before. I am a little familiar with its history, that it was built in 1867. This is absolutely one of my favorite houses that's for sale right now. And even though I've seen it, I think it's still worth including in this because if you haven't seen it yet, this is an absolutely gorgeous, pristine property. We have this really grand Italianate facade, a cupola on the roof, and a wraparound porch. It's just, I, I'm so excited to show you guys this one, actually. Walking into the house, it has a very traditional Italianate foyer with an octagonal newel post. This is the type of stuff that I would see back home in the older housing stock, except for, I mean, this is just so well maintained. Off to the side, it looks like there's these giant round doors that just open into these um, different public rooms. So let's start exploring these. The parlor is just totally refined. It has a pier mirror between the two windows in the front. I mean, look at those floors. They just glow in the sunlight. And I mean, could the furnishing be any more perfect? It would almost be a shame if the furniture were to leave the space. To the other side of the stair hall, it appears is the music room. And once again, I mean, just how absolutely refined and gorgeous is this? This is the type of house that I could see myself retiring in someday, out in the middle of absolutely nowhere, just enjoying life. I mean, this is a very livable, but also very grand home. Next, we'll see the dining room, and it looks like this space might need a little bit of TLC, but I mean, once again, for the price of the house and just how absolutely grand it is and all the work that's already seemingly been done to it, I mean, it, this seems like just a tiny little project to really address here. Otherwise, this is a totally gorgeous space. I really love how the kitchen was put together in this house. It's very similar to how it would have functioned back whenever it was first built and servants would have been cooking in the kitchen instead of the owners themselves. So you have a large table in the middle, you've got the butcher block, and really it doesn't look like there's any upper cabinets, just all lower cabinets with some counter space, fireplace in the middle. I mean, this is just very, very charming. Looks like we might be upstairs now in one of the bedrooms. There's a large archway that frames the bed. And I mean, once again, this is just an absolutely incredible house. If you happen to be out in this area and you buy this house, please contact me. And I would love to do a full video on this because this is definitely my favorite so far. Wow, look at that bathtub. Oh, and then up at the top of the cupola, there's a newel post with a lamp. This pretty much checks every box for my own personal dream home, what I might hope to own someday. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at all that detailing. Well, unfortunately, that's the end of the photos, so I guess we'll go on to the next house. The next house is in Plattsburgh, New York, and has 14 bedrooms and 10 bathrooms for under $700,000. That's absolutely massive. So it looks like it's 9,732 square feet. When was this one built? So it looks like this one's 9,732 square feet, built in 1878. I really wish we had the history on some of these, because like the last house we looked at and at this one, it'd just be great to know kind of what the story is, because these are just such grand houses we're looking at today. I might circle back around and do a deep dive on a couple of these, just to see what I can't find out. So looks like we've made it to the stair hall. Those floors are just incredible. Beautiful doorways, millwork. It's pretty tame for a house of this caliber, honestly. But I think that's okay. It's on the simpler side of what could be considered grand, with each detail just really adding to the space without overwhelming it. It's kind of hard to tell what these rooms are just because they're all empty. This might be a double parlor, a music room, a ballroom. I'm not really certain. But these stained glass windows, which almost look like they might have been salvaged from a church. I would not be surprised. Either way, just absolutely gorgeous. 
Yeah, this house is incredible. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. So the stair hall is really grand. It looks like it rises up at least three stories going landing to landing. And I mean, it's just a true work of art all the way up. Oh, is this a library? Oh, you know what? This is not. That looks like either a mural or wallpaper. Interesting. And it looks like there might be an ADU on one of the upper floors. I'm curious. I want to go down to the description real fast and just see what that says. Residence has four bedrooms with closets and 10 dormitory style rooms, two full kitchens, one kitchenette. That sounds like this has probably been broken up at one point to host multiple residences. But either way, I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous, but I think I'm ready to move on to the next one. Our next house is in Urbana, Ohio at $790,000. I love the Romanesque style. I love how imposing it is, how grand it is, how detailed it can be with also holding this kind of simple and refined charm. It really maximizes the few details that are spread across the facade. Wow, what a lot that is. Do you see how long that thing is? Oh, an ingle nook. This is one of my absolute favorite features to have in a stair hall or in an entryway. Just a warm place to sit down, put your shoes on before you head out. This is beyond charming. And that ceiling is amazing. I love the coffered ceiling with what looks like either hand stenciling or some sort of a decorative motif going on. This is truly a huge space. I believe that's still the front door we're looking at there. The fireplace isn't even in view, neither are the stairs. This is an absolutely massive entryway. So the first room we're seeing is possibly a parlor or a dining room, a music room. I'm not really sure because of the lack of furnishing. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes. So it looks like the rounded room in the tower might have a window bench that wraps all the way around. I'm really hoping. Oh yeah, there's a closer up picture of it. Yeah, this is absolutely gorgeous. The stained glass windows, the curving millwork. Once again, something that just can't really be replicated today without costing an arm and a leg. Okay, so this is definitely the dining room. I recognize the built-in hutch, the wainscoting and wall paneling. And it's so interesting how there are pendant lights that surround the main chandelier. We've seen that in a couple of the larger Gilded Age mansions that I've featured on this channel. And every time, it's just a very impressive composition for the lighting. Yeah, the amount of artistry in this house is stunning. There's just no surface that's been left unadorned here. And something I've seen a lot in the comments over the years is, you know, where are the kitchens in these old houses? I mean, most of the time, these are not rooms that the owners would have ever entered. Sometimes they were in the basement, sometimes they were in separate buildings. They were really kind of just for the servants and very utility-driven spaces. Even in the most expensive homes, the kitchens weren't something to be shown off. They were just a place for food to be prepared, and that was really about it. So I think it's always really interesting to see these older homes that don't have brand new kitchens that have blown out walls to open up the space. It just kind of gives you this glimpse into the past and helps you really imagine how this house was used back when it was inhabited by its original owners. Oh, this bathroom is amazing. It looks like the tile on the floor has a herringbone pattern surrounded by a Greek key mosaic. And then the subway tile on the walls. I mean, this is just absolutely classic. Even the attic has decorative millwork. Yeah, you know what, guys? I think I'm going to do a deep dive on this one in the last house we saw and try to figure out a story, maybe do a full presentation on each of these two homes. Yeah, I, I, I'd be willing to bet that there's a really amazing story to go with these and probably a handful of historic photos that I could find. All right, well, this has been simply stunning, but I think we are probably ready to move on to the next one. Our next house is the first house we're going to cover that's over a million dollars, and it's in Indianapolis, Indiana. All right, I know a million dollars goes a long way in Indiana, so I'm excited to see this. Well, it's kind of hard to see behind all the trees, but it looks like we might have a storybook-style house. Oh, gorgeous front door. Okay, so it looks like you enter below the landing of the stairs, and then you walk up a couple of steps to get into the stair hall. Wow, that colonnade is just so impressive. Now, is that a skylight on the ceiling, or is that perhaps lit by LEDs or something else? I guess we'll have to keep going through the house to kind of get our bearings. Yeah, this is an interesting one. I absolutely love the relief work found on the coffered ceiling. And it's nice to see the cohesive elements as well. I mean, whether it's a skylight, it's definitely done more in the Gothic style with the pointed archway. 
And then we pair that with the fireplace with gothic tracery. I mean, it just creates a really cohesive feeling throughout this house. Oh, look at the alcove. I could imagine myself sitting there and reading all day, honestly. That just seems like such a nice little space there. And it looks like this home has been modernized to a degree. And I would love to hear your perspective on these more modern updates to the house, such as the bookshelves, the modern color schemes, and some of the other things we've seen so far. It's quite the dichotomy to see them paired with these old world elements, such as those gothic doors going into the dining room. There's definitely an eclecticism about it, but I mean, it's far from being bad. Oh, the sunroom is amazing. Once again, I love the gothic tracery pulling on that main theme of the house. And then it's paired with terrazzo flooring. And that's so interesting. It's a really fun house with a lot of really formal elements, but it doesn't feel stuffy. I mean, it feels very lively, looks very clean and well-maintained. This is definitely one of those really grand houses that just seems very livable to me. And it's really nice to see a house that isn't too formal, but still is very, very nice. The second floor stair landing is an incredible space. Once again, more gothic tracery on the chandelier. And then what I would assume is down in the basement is the billiards room. I know a lot of you love billiards rooms in these old homes, so this is quite the treat. And that's really about all there is to see with this house. We can take a look at the grounds while we wait for Dalton to um, show us the next one. The next house is in Little Rock, Arkansas at 1.45 million. Looks like this is a Beaux-Arts style mansion from 1900. I, um, I absolutely love Beaux-Arts. I know a lot of you do as well. Yeah, this is very stately. The Tempietto on the front, that's always something that catches my attention. Wow, what a great first impression it is walking into this house with all of this amazing woodwork. From the parquet floor to the grand staircase and the ingle nook. This is absolutely stunning. It looks like it's been very well taken care of as well. Is that a cove ceiling in this room? It looks, it's kind of hard to tell with the hand stenciling, but on the side of the fireplace, it looks like there's a shadow, which kind of tells us that it does round out. Um, this double parlor or ballroom music room i'm not really sure this is um this is such a gorgeous gorgeous house yeah it looks like after we crossed that million dollar threshold we kind of got into a new realm of houses where there are these incredibly formal rooms that just look picture perfect and a lot more space how many square feet is this one so it looks like this is 8339 square feet and my goodness, look at those wood floors. Just incredible artisan right here. So upstairs, it looks like there's a few bedrooms and a bathroom. And the billiards room, this is amazing. That is an absolutely gorgeous house. I might look for the history of this one as well to create a presentation. Alrighty, but that is the end of those photos. So we're going to move on to the next one now. We're going to go all the way back up to Illinois in Lexington. And the price is going to jump quite a bit to $4.5 million. Okay, you know what? I actually saw this house shared in a Facebook group not that long ago. And this one's a real treat. So 9,000 square feet. What year was this one built? Let's take a look here. 1890. So this eclectic Queen Anne Tudor kind of mix is not really a style you would expect to see in Illinois. This is what I would expect to see in upstate New York, maybe in New Hampshire or Connecticut, kind of sparingly in some of the old money enclaves that are up there. But I mean, yeah, this is gorgeous. I do want to point out the formal gardens. It has large front porch, fountains, and then we get to the stair hall. And I mean, this entire house is just an absolute work of art. It's kind of mind boggling to imagine how long it would have taken artists to actually complete this house once work started. Back in the 1890s, it was very common to have artists come into your house and live there for several years while they completed their work. And I'm not just talking about one artist. Usually it was a whole team of men who had trained their entire lives, most of the time overseas, practicing these old world techniques. And they would just come into the house and decorate it until it was finished. And I don't know if that's the story with this house or if perhaps the original owners hired a more local interior design firm. But I mean, this, this really does just have all those old world elements that you might have seen copied over from Italian architecture and Italian furniture, even through Spanish. It's just really this interesting portal back in time to when houses weren't expected to be completed quickly, but rather 
it was almost better to have them take five or ten years to fully finish out so that you get results like this. I mean, this is, you don't see this in modern builds, just period. Just absolutely lovely furnishing all throughout. And I know that's not really the point of looking at a house that's for sale, but it really does just tie this whole house together. Something really interesting about this one is it's not just the house, it's the entire property, from the formal gardens to the swimming pool to the tennis courts to the guest house. This is really just a fantasy come to life. It's so cute how they have the little train running, and then I believe in the next building is a carousel. Yep, there it is. So that's just a really fun one, but we're just about done with the pictures, so let's go ahead and move on to the next house. The next house is located in Holland, New York, for $6.5 million. Right, so let's take a look at which year this was built. It was built in 1860, about 25 acres, so it's fairly secluded. So I have not seen this one. I love the Tudor Revival elements with the towers, the large chimneys. This has, this is just absolutely gorgeous. It looks like it has a sunken garden. The first interior picture shows us those large windows that we saw from the outside, and now that we're going through this, I don't think these are in any particular order, so we'll just kind of have to jump around. The dining room is absolutely gorgeous. While there are bold colors, it's not overbearing by any means. It's still very much refined. And it looks like this kind of translates into other spaces in the house. The diamond paned windows, wood paneling on the walls. This has all that old world charm, and I just love the stained glass. Once again, these really bold colors. Okay, so I'd imagine that this is probably near the front door. Probably should have been the first photo, honestly. This is what appears to be the stair hall. Once again, clad in wood paneling with wooden balustrade. Absolutely gorgeous space. There's all these little intricate details throughout. I'm really glad that they took detailed shots of these because these are just really nice to look at. So it looks like we're in one of the bedrooms now. Large gothic fireplace, wood paneling an alcove for the bed. This is really just such a charming and lovely space. So here's another bedroom and what appears to be another bedroom and these are amazing ceilings. Look at how those niches are cut into the groin vault there. And this general design kind of translates into the next spaces as well. Oh, a chapel. This is fun. I've only been in a small handful of houses that have had their own private chapels and I just think it's always so interesting. There's always some great story that goes along with why there was a private chapel in the house. And of course, I'm not sure what the story is here, but this might warrant a little more research and possibly a future video. I don't know. Let me know if you'd like to see me do a deep dive on this house. This could be a really fun one to research, and I'd love to find the historic photos to see how the rooms were originally decorated and really what this property looked like when it was first built. All right, what's next for us? Up next, we're going to go down to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and this one's going to be really special for a lot of people. It's a Frank Lloyd Wright listed at $7.9 million. So I'm actually very familiar with this house. It's the only textile block house designed by Frank Lloyd Wright outside of the state of California. So you might already be familiar with this house if you are a Frank Lloyd Wright aficionado, but if you haven't seen it yet, it has been meticulously restored and has received some updates throughout. This is quite the treat. Let's just go ahead and go through it. Walking inside, there's those Cherokee red floors, one of Frank Lloyd Wright's signatures, as well as the textile block walls. And I mean, this is just absolutely gorgeous. You go to these Frank Lloyd Wright house museums, and they don't quite have this kind of luster. I mean, you can tell that this house has received all the money and TLC that it has needed without the prohibitive nature of running, you know, a nonprofit or a house museum that a lot of these Frank Lloyd Wright houses have had to make compromises with. And before I tell you which year this was designed in, I want you to guess. Just have a number in the back of your head because I guarantee if you're not familiar with this house or especially not familiar with Frank Lloyd Wright's work, you might guess a much younger date than when it was actually designed, which is something I just love about his work and how timeless it is. Something else to pay attention to as we go through the house is not just the geometry and the straight lines, but also the play on light and shadows and how he really embraces these natural elements as part of the space and the experience you have going through the house. And I don't remember if some of this furniture was designed by him, however, it would not surprise me as this dining set is pretty par for the course with a lot of Frank Lloyd Wright's later work. Here's another one of those Frank Lloyd Wright signatures that we can see with the glasswork. He was known for having 
glass miter together to create these voidal corners so that it was almost like you were looking outside without the inhibitions caused by mullions getting in your way. Now, of course, some of these are really big and bold, and they're intentional to kind of constrain the space. But in other corners, you're allowed to just kind of look out and feel like the room disappears. It's just all these little thought-provoking elements that come together to really create a visual and spatial experience that isn't like what you would find in most other homes or buildings. You know, this is an absolutely gorgeous property. If I ever have the chance to visit this one and get my own footage and photography, I would absolutely love to make a video on this. It's by far one of my favorite Frank Lloyd Wright houses, just because of its timelessness. It feels very different than anything else he's designed outside of California. All right, well, that was a real treat. I never get tired of looking at Frank Lloyd Wright homes. But we must move on. So what's next? Next up, we have a house in Alton, Illinois for $8.45 million. Wow, I didn't know there was anything that expensive in Alton, Illinois. So if you're not familiar with Alton, Illinois, it's been called the San Francisco of the Midwest. It's this really cute little river town with steep hills, a huge stock of old Victorian era architecture. I just cannot imagine what $8 million might get you in Alton because it's notoriously known for having very low priced housing. So let's see what this is. Wow, where in Alton is this Georgian beauty? This is gorgeous. So this is definitely an outlier for Alton. Most of the houses there are more modest than this. However, this is just absolutely incredible. Really grand space. A lot of modern updates as well. Okay, I see. So it looks like this sits up on the bluffs overlooking the Missouri and Mississippi River confluence. If you ever get the chance to be in the area and drive up along the river there, it's just this really beautiful natural spot that is often overlooked. So if you ever get the chance, I would highly recommend checking it out. Yeah, this house appears to have everything from the library to a grand stair hall and a ton of bedrooms. Fully finished out closets. I am not seeing anything that looks like it needs any amount of work in here. Of course, with these old houses, you never know. But I mean, this just looks absolutely pristine and perfect, honestly. So it's not labeled here, but it's really cool to see an elevator here on the back staircase. In-home theater. A long corridor to who knows where, maybe the garage. Quite the spread here from the pool, the playground, the views overlooking the river up on the bluff. Yeah, this is a spectacular property. Yeah, I had no idea anything like this existed in Alton. How crazy is this? Well, whoever ends up buying this is going to enjoy it immensely. I don't know how you couldn't. Just wow. That was a really fun thing to see. Kind of blew my mind about the area. Once again, I didn't know there was anything nearly that expensive or large in that town. That was really fun. Let's see what's next. Up next, we're going to head over to Pennsylvania. This house is $8,495,000. Okay, so it looks like this one was built in 1905. We're seeing an attached garage, which still would have been very rare for the time, but not totally unheard of. So let's start going through this. I love the gothic pointed archways above the dotted marble floor. That's a really incredible look. What else do we have here? Oh yes, yeah, stone relief work, hardwood floors, and tapestries. Oh, I love how they decorated this. See, this just feels very like livable and refined without feeling too stuffy or ostentatious. I mean, this is a gorgeous space. Oh, and then the stair hall. I guess we'll get to see more pictures of that later, but for now the dining room. Once again, how picture perfect is this? I love how every single photo so far has just had all these beautiful details, and it's not overwhelming by any means. It's a very well-maintained house. And how interesting with the kitchen. I love when people match up the cabinets with the existing millwork, and especially if they can incorporate, you know, the same kind of motifs like the Gothic tracery we're seeing here. When I see modernized spaces like this that are definitely not original to the house, but show some sort of sensitivity for the original design, I just get so excited because it's always fun to see how creative some people can get with tying in 
these new, more modern amenities into this old world style. Yeah, let's keep going through this. It's just so interesting to see all the different textures and colors found throughout the lattice around the tub surround. It was a very popular trend back in the Gilded Age, and something we saw not just in houses, but also on luxury cruise ships such as the Titanic. It was very, very popular in the upper echelons. Oh wow, the main bedroom. This is incredible. I love the exposed wood beams decorated with that simple motif. What appears to be stone block walls, though that might just be paint or wallpaper, I'm not really sure. And then wood paneling in the bathroom with beautiful tile work. Yeah, I can go ahead and file this one underneath my dream houses. Yeah, that was beautiful. So I've heard that these get better as we go through them. So Dalton, what do, what do we have next? The next one's located in Tennessee and it's priced at $16,950,000. All righty. So five beds, six bath, 8,517 square feet. Massive columns outside the house. All right. So it looks like we're finally getting to the interior photos. And this is amazing. Look at these murals on the walls. Wow. Yeah, I'd love to know the history of this house. Um, just these rooms are so large and continuous. This was definitely owned by someone who hosted large parties or dances and needed a lot of space for entertaining. This might be one that I circle around to and try to find the history and more historic photos to really bring this to life because this is, this is incredible. Oh, back to the stair hall. Wow. So it looks like the steps have had some faux marbling applied to them, which was surprisingly common during the Victorian era and the Gilded Age, and even a little beforehand. It's always fun to look for the real marble and the faux marble, because sometimes it was done not just to cut on costs, but because it was actually just the style of the time, in the same way that you might wear a fake fur coat as opposed to real fur coat, just because that's what's in style, it's what's socially acceptable. Very much the same deal back then. Some people preferred to have faux marble over real marble, just because it implied that you were bringing artists into your house and it would be more costly than having the real thing. And that's something we've seen play out in a few of the houses we featured, and it's something I always like to highlight because whenever you look at these old photos, especially of homes that are demolished, sometimes it can be really hard to tell if it's real marble or faux marble. And that's usually where I have to find descriptions and firsthand accounts describing the space and just kind of hope that the people who were describing the spaces were correct in their assumptions. Gorgeous property. Huge property. How many acres does this thing sit on? This is, this is quite the spread. I have a feeling that a lot of this price tag is just in the land itself. Let's see here. 66.1 acres. That's a huge lot. All right, well, that was quite the treat. Let's go somewhere else now. We're heading up to Manhattan to see a $29,200,000 townhouse. All right, so the first photos are starting us off inside. And we've seen a lot of houses like this, either lost or surviving throughout the years on this channel. and. This is very much where I'm comfortable kind of dissecting the homes and analyzing their architectural elements. Quite exemplary for the Gilded Age in New York. Wow, the stair hall. Recently, I did a profile on Mamie Fish's house in New York. And while this is definitely not that house, it's kind of a similar arrangement with the stair hall leading into parlors on either side, of which really just allows for a lot of entertaining space. Oh, this library with the wood paneling, the plaster frieze, and the built-in glass pane bookcases. Yeah, this is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, yep. So yeah, it looks like the kitchen here is on the garden level or basement, whatever you would want to call it. And I don't know if this house has sub-basements or not, but definitely on the garden level. Which, once again, very, very common for the time. Oh, and there's the facade. Yeah, this is absolutely gorgeous. All right, so I know we've been going up in price this whole time, but I'm starting to wonder how high the limit is. So what's next, Dalton? 
We're heading to California for a home priced at $29,995,000. I think I remember reading an article about this house a couple of years ago. Yeah, it was this house. So this was designed by Julia Morgan to be kind of a replica of the White House, or at least based on the White House. And if you're unfamiliar with Julia Morgan, she was the choice architect of William Randolph Hearst, who was a media mogul. He hired her to design mansions all around the country, but most notably probably Hearst Castle, which is a thriving tourist attraction and house museum today. It's just so interesting to see the wide variety of her work, and I'm not sure what all in this house is original, what has been added to it, etc. But there are definitely a few of her signatures in here and some of the older portions of the house that we've seen. Yeah, it sure has been modernized a lot, hasn't it? Though it looks like the facade and gardens maintain a lot of their original integrity. That's really delightful to see. Because as we know in California, things go up and they come down at an alarming rate. But that's not unique to the area, of course. All right, well, that was fun. I'll probably do a video on this one in the future. I've been thinking about doing a compilation of Julia Morgan's work, kind of like the Stanford White video or the Richard Morris Hunt video that I did. We'll probably see this one again sometime in the future. We're on our last house. Priced at $60 million, it's located in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, we don't get to do a lot of houses in Texas. Unfortunately, a lot of the historic home stock there was not properly documented, and then a lot of photos that were documented were lost to fires or just lost in general. So it's really kind of sad just how lackadaisical the um, history keeping has been in that state. But wow, this is a gorgeous home. When I think of a dream house for myself and like beyond dream, there's what I would actually feasibly want in life. And then there's houses like this that are just designed in the Chateau style with limestone, wood paneling. This is just simply stunning. It's just so reserved yet so charming at the same time and just incredibly sophisticated. This is one of those houses that just leaves a lasting impression. I mean, every detail is just perfect. From the subdued cornice to the beautiful parquet floors. And all the French doors everywhere looking out into these gardens. Yeah, this is a truly beautiful house. Oh, I suppose this is maybe the guest house? This is gorgeous too, wow. And then the pool house or casino, um, whatever you'd want to call it an in-home theater. Yeah, what an absolutely just incredible estate this is. This is one that I would gladly go tour. And that brings us to the end of our journey through these incredible historic homes. I hope you found these architectural gems as fascinating as I did. Remember, history isn't just about places and events. It's about the bricks, the mortar, and the hard work that shaped the world that we can appreciate today. Whether that presents itself as a $100,000 house or a $60 million house, I think that sentiment rings true all the way across the board. With all that being said, did you have a favorite house? Let me know down below in the comment section. Also, I'd be curious to know if you'd want to see more videos like this in the future. I had a good time kind of mixing it up and trying out this new video. So if you do want to see more React videos in the future, just let me know and I'd be happy to make a couple more. As always, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.